guys, welcome to Swatch Fest. So you guys know the drill on Saturdays, we are going to swatch 10 random polishes. I want you to sit back, I'm giving you permission here you guys, sit back and relax. Just watch the little lady paint her nails. Just enjoy the just serenity of the moment. <laughs> I'm just gonna have some fun hanging out today. I'm going to share with you some, um, we always talk about makeup. We, of course, always talk about nail polish. I'm going to share some media things with you, some random favorites. I'm actually filming this on Saturday, and I'm going to go edit this right after and try to get this up for you as soon as possible um, because I was planning on filming yesterday, but I had to unexpectedly get some dental work done. I went in just for a routine cleaning. However, it's not extremely routine for me because since we moved, I didn't get a new dentist since I moved here, and so I'm like a little bit overdue. And he was like, oh, let's take care of something there. And so then I ended up being in the chair for a while and came home pretty sore from the dentist, I have to say. They worked kind of fast, but I think... In working fast, it kind of tore my gums up a little bit, so I was in quite a bit of pain. And I also had this dentist, this is the first dentist to ever tell me that he thinks I need braces as an adult. I had some braces on my teeth when I was like probably eight years old, eight or nine, because in second grade I had headgear for all of second grade and a little bit of third. I was one of those kids with headgear. I've told you guys this before on this channel. But I was one of those poor kids and it was the one that had like the mole skin, chin rest and then it like went over your face like a big square because I had a severe underbite so my whole jaw is out here. Anybody out there that can feel me on that and I've passed it on to two of my kids, I can tell already the baby has it too and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Nobody else in my family, there are eight kids in my family, nobody else has it. I'm the only lucky one. So um, anyway, my jaw was like way out here. I was talking like this when I was a kid. And my mom was like, whoa, okay, we gotta take care of that. And my dad was only, my dad had a teacher's salary. I don't even know how much he made at the most. He probably made when he was finally ready to retire, probably somewhere around 70,000, which is a, just a little bit to try to raise eight kids on, at least in the US. But my parents were like committed to orthodontia. So out of, of the eight kids, at least half of us had like intense orthodontia. So I've been through that whole thing. Um, I don't really want to get braces, but this doctor says that I actually only have two teeth that touch on both sides. There's just two. And he's like, how are you even chewing your food? I've had one doctor before tell me that, one dentist as an adult. <clears throat> So I think my teeth have kind of changed, my jaw has changed a little bit since I was a kid. I I feel like it has to do with how they spread my top jaw. They I was one of those kids also, yay. Tell me down in the comments if you also did this. They put this contraption on my mouth to spread my top jaw. And then like once every two weeks, I had to lay down on the table and my mom would like crank with a key. I think I've told you guys this part before too. Traumatic experience. Um. So anyway, I feel like I feel like my jaw has changed a little bit, but I'm, I'm sure that they did that to the level that they thought it was appropriate then. But now, so few of my teeth touch, and he's like, I don't even know how you're chewing your food. So it's not really co cosmetic, although there are two teeth here that I would love to have straightened by braces. But um, he's concerned that I'm not chewing my food, which means that I'm gonna have digestive, or I already have di digestive issues, and it's really bad for my teeth because the acids and stuff. So, I don't know, I have, to, I have to try to figure out and decide if I can handle that. Um, so anyway, I know a lot of you probably out there have braces as an adult. You can let me know how you feel about it in the comments, what you think. I know Invisalign is always an option, but you have to like remember to put it back in and like make the choice daily to do good on your dental care, on your orthodontia. When I was a kid, I also had a retainer that I was supposed to wear every night and I didn't, which made it so that I had orthodontia longer and stuff oh it's just a whole it's a whole thing so anyway that was my day yesterday i'm feeling better today so that's why we're filming on saturday swatch fest and that's why it will be up later in the day like it sometimes is real late on saturdays i know you, lots of you have sunday swatch fest because i sometimes get this video up so late okay so we're going to talk about 10 random polishes my first one is pretty funny so when I was at Marshall's and I saw this polish, I bought it purely for the name, although the color is really pretty. It's this like burgundy, 
lustry shade and this is called after sex and I just think that that's hilarious that it's named that and I was showing it to the cashier and she's like that must be a mistake I can't even believe they named it that and I was just showing her because I thought it was cute and um, you know I came home and looked it up online and it is a legitimate shade from them but um, anyway I think it's so funny so this is great at two coats has a really nice application so I was pleased with it Next up we have one of these Everglaze polishes from China Glaze, which I'm still finding for like $1.25 at Sally Beauty. Um, yeah, really, really inexpensive if you want to try them right now. So this is the shade Paint My Piggies Pink. Out of all the ones I've tried, I don't think I favor this one very much. It's a light pink with beautiful shimmer. So some of you may absolutely be in love with this shade. Just for me, I wasn't crazy about I th the th like the three coats that I needed to get it opaque enough and then once it was on it was just not my favorite shade but um yeah in general I feel like this line is pretty good it's nothing like that you have to go out and get right now and actually everything that I've purchased at the Sally Beauty clearance section has all pretty much been better than that original Everglaze review that I did of that summer collection that they put out. I really didn't care for that collection very much, but all these ones that I've been picking up on clearance are pretty good. I mean, they're not they're not unusable or anything. So, anyway, let's check out and see how this one swatches. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you guys about this product. Did you see, was it on Snapchat or, I might have just vlogged about it for my end of the month vlog coming up. I picked this up for myself for my Easter present. Sorry, there's boobs on the screen right now. Um, and I wanted to give it a try. It's a Miracle Bamboo Comfort Bra, world's most com comfortable bra. I picked this up at Bed Bath & Beyond. And it is comfortable and it has a front snap closure, which I really like. And it's more comfortable than a sports bra because the straps go straight in the back rather than, well, I, I know there's sports bras that do that too, but all the ones I have currently have the halter back or the um, cross back. And so it gets tight on my neck and I don't like it. It gets uncomfortable. So anyway, this is very comfortable, but I need to size up. This is an extra large bust 40 to 43. And that's, a, that's correct for the size that I wear, but I don't know if any of you else have tried this and actually when I look at the model, there's two models on here and they look to be having the same problem as I do which is that the cup, like the line for the cup just basically like cuts right through your breast and so you have that bubble boob kind of effect. It's like because it's so tight to support I guess, it like cuts right across your breast and then you have like a two boob look which is not cute. So <laughs> I'm going to go back and trade this in for the next size and see if that helps it. If it doesn't help it, then I think it's just a flaw in the bra. And in that case, I don't think that I recommend this. But for comfort level, I do recommend it. So if it's not wearable because of that cut boob thing, then that's a bummer for this. But And I don't really have giant boobs, but I have like a broader back. So I have to like go up in cup size. Anyway, so yeah, this has been, this has been interesting to try out. And I'll let you guys know if it works out great for me if I um, size up. I'm always looking for that comfortable bra because I literally 
hate bras. I never wear them. My boobs are getting so saggy because I just absolutely hate bras. I hate how they make me feel. I like how they make me look. So that's why I wear them. Like they just, I mean, I don't look sloppy if I have a bra on, but I hate how they make me feel. Okay. So this is our orange today. This is Finger Paints Clay on Words, and this is a beautiful coral with some pinky glowy shimmer. It's like a pink and gold. It's a really pretty and glowy looking, and it's like a bright neon beautiful coral. I actually prefer this to the Finger Paint Neons that they came out with the bamboo, which you will see a review coming up from me soon. I think I actually kind of prefer this, but this was a three-coater. I prefer it for the neon aspect. Um, but it was a three-coater. I don't, well, yeah, this definitely would benefit from a white base, but I don't feel like you have to do a white base on this. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. Next up, I didn't have a yellow, so we're trying out this white from Sesh, and it is called Calla Lily. It's what I have on my nails today, and um, I actually like it. I continue to be really impressed by this line, and I'm so happy that they're being clearance so I can pick them up for a very small fraction of their original price. Um, and I think they have great formulas. I don't think, I think I was only ever disappointed by one, and that's because it had gotten really really thick on me and just was like and I also don't like the base coat but those are literally the only two and I've really liked everything else I tried so let's go ahead and see how this swatches I think this is going to be a go-to for me it's not a one coat white but um I could go pick up a few more and have really inexpensive whites that are great at two coats and just apply like a dream so yeah I really like this My makeup, by the way, is not a reflection of my mood. I am in a super happy sunny mood, but I just hadn't done like a really heavy smoky eye in a while, and actually Tim really doesn't like it when I do this kind of makeup. He just, he's like, you look like a completely different person. I like it when you have like simple, easy makeup that makes you just look like the person I met anyway. He's not like super particular about makeup, but I can tell because every single time I do this, he's like, whoa. <laughs> so, and then when I wear like really simple makeup, he's like, you look so beautiful today. So, um, anyway, where was I going? I was going to tell you what is on my face. Let's do makeup roundup. So I went back to one of my very old favorites today. This Revlon Photo Ready HD. Um, is that what they're calling it? Why can't I remember what this is called? I don't see HD on there. It's just Revlon Photo Ready. So anyway, I use this uh, with a beauty blender. I use my Eco Tools. I actually use this for foundation, blush, and um, a little bit of contour. So I was really enjoying this using um, it kind of for full face today. Speaking of contour, I use this NYX Blush in Taupe. I've been meaning to get this forever since I heard Nikki Tutorials talking about it years and years ago. And I don't ever see it at like my CVS, whatever places carry NYX, I never see it there. But it was at Bed Bath & Beyond, so I stuck it in my Easter basket. And I like it, like I said, I, I applied it pretty minimally and I used the Beauty Blender, which was nice because it already had some foundation on it. So if it ever got too heavy, you know, you could just flip it over and just blend it out, so I liked that. Like I said, I also applied my blush the same way. This is just the e.l.f. blush in Mellow Mauve. This is the shade I use when I want to be a little bit like um, pinky toned blush, but I don't really want it to be very bright. 
um, because you know me, I always wear my Luminoso, but sometimes I want pinky tones instead. So that's what I use. It's a very like minimal blush, like barely there. For highlighter, I used the gold highlighter from this big old illuminating palette. Not my fave, I have to say, not my fave. Um, it doesn't really have a name, just called Mega Glow Illuminating Palette. It's it's okay, and it was it was inexpensive, but um, yeah, I still like my Physicians Formula One. For brows, we did the Anastasia, of course, and I used the same brush that I did last week. I've been really enjoying that, so I'm going to continue with it, I think. I really like it. And then for my eyes, I used Tarte Lid and Bloom, and I just did a two-color smoky eye, mostly one color. I just used two because I wanted a crease. Um, what is on my palette here? There's like lotion on here. Hmm. I used a crease shade for blending out um, the main color. So anyway, let me show you what I used. So for the crease today, I used Sweetheart, which of the th like three crease shades, that's the one that's a little bit more pinky toned. And then for the whole rest of the eye, I used Leader. And um, yeah, I like how they have like three very dark shades and Leader was the little bit reddier shade. Although when I look in my eye, I can't really see too much red. So anyway, um, yeah, that is what is on my eyes. Plus... I used the Rimmel Scandalized Waterproof in, what is this shade, Deep Blue, in my inner rim and a little bit in my upper and uh, in my waterline. And then for lashes, we did Wet n Wild Lash Renegade, which this is decent. I don't really have an issue with it, and I kind of like how the ball makes it easier. It has a ball tip, makes it easier to um, get my bottom lashes. So it's decent. It's not my favorite ever, but... And it was inexpensive, which makes it nice since you have to throw away mascara so often. What's left? I used my Tarte Shape Tape, and then I have Kara Lashes on. Oh, sorry about that. Number 48, as always, and then I used the Milani Make It Last Setting Spray. So that is everything I used today. Okay, for green today, I'm sharing a polish that I picked up last fall at the Indie Shop in Torrance and don't forget you guys you can still get tickets for that now the VIP bags are sold out so you um, can't any longer purchase the ticket where you get the whole bag that has like $150 worth of product but tickets are definitely still for sale for the event and then I think it's after 12 you can just get them free so I think it I quoted the wrong price to you last week it's considerably less expensive to get in I think than I told you last week so anyway check that out you just go to the Andy shop um, on Facebook and you can go check that out. So anyway, this is from Squishy Face Polish and this is called Pistachio Gelato. And it's just a beautiful spring green and has a very dainty um, linear holographic. It's really, really pretty though. I like this in two coats. And I don't ever really hear anybody talking about this brand, but all the ones that I picked up from her at the event, I really did enjoy. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and see how it swatches. Oh, I forgot to tell you in the makeup portion, all my lips is just um, White Russian from Buxom. Okay, for blue, we have this kind of greeny blue. It's a dusty, um, it's from their Miracle Gel line, which I pick up, where do I pick these up at? At Walmart? I think I've got them before at Walmart, really inexpensively, a few other places. This one's called Gray Matters, and which is, it's nice. It's not really a gray color to me, but it's a grayed out blue green so anyway this is really pretty it's great at two coats I thought it was decent I'm glad to always find these on sale though because they have a really high price tag normally for cream polishes that are made in giant vats so anyway I was happy to find this on sale because I think it has a great formula and it's very pretty
All right, for purple today, this isn't really very purple. I have another purpley color coming up for you in the glitter spot. But um, this is, it's kind of purpley because it's mauve neutral. This is the shade Madeline from Zoya. This is just perfection, you guys. This is definitely a contender for A plus spot, as well as was the squishy face, Squishy Face Linear Holographic. I um, was choosing between that one too because I really enjoyed that. Um, so this has a great two coat formula. It's very smooth. This is just a very easy to wear shade. Really, really easy to wear. So I did enjoy this. Let's see how it swatches. Okay, like I said, I do have a purple in the glitter spot. This is a polish that I picked up from the brand Polish, P-A-H-L-I-S-H. And it's called Invisibility Cloak, and I'm pretty sure it's from a Harry Potter collection. I picked it up during a sale they were having, um, so I picked up a bunch of random polishes. But this is a, basically, it's like a, it's in a, a slightly purpley base, but it's, it, it's basically coverage of very small glitters and maybe some flakies. I don't really think flakies though. It's just like a really metallic look on the nail because there's just so much density of these extremely tiny shimmer glitters. And then it also has, and those are like silvery purple and then it also has um, purple shimmers in there as well that are different color than the others that kind of just stand out at different angles. I see them Basically, you can't really see them very well. They just kind of like shimmer here or there, but it's really really pretty This is a really brilliant look on the nail. No hollow in here um, And this does take three coats though because you really have to build it up because it's like basically trying to build up shimmer so Anyway, this is really pretty. This is called invisibility cloak. So let's take a look at it So I do have movies to talk to you guys about this week. I go through phases. I definitely go through phases. So this week, um, what were we watching? We were watching, oh, I finally got to watch Split. Um, that's a M. Night Shyamalan movie with, what is his name? James McAvoy. Um, anyway, where he plays a character who has 23 different personalities. And I'd been wanting to watch it for a while and I finally convinced him. He's really not too much of a thriller movie fan. Um, but I am, like, big time. So, anyway, it was good. And at the end of the movie, I like to pull up reviews on YouTube to hear what, you know, how people interpret the ending and different things like that. And they were comparing it to a movie called Identity with John Cusack, and I love John Cusack. So I pulled up that movie and watched it, and it was okay. It was, it was just okay. I think that I had seen it before. I think I'd watched it on TV somewhere, like in a hotel room or something. Um, so that was good. I liked it. Um, they're both films that are dealing with um, DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, I think is what it's called. So it was good. And then um, I was like, you know, that was decent. Let me Google what the top like thriller mystery films are. And I'd seen a lot of them already. Of course, there's so many Hitchcock films on there and Memento and then a bunch, a bunch that I'd seen already. But a few that I hadn't seen that I decided to there then watch. I was having a marathon of thriller movies. I watched Shutter Island, which I did enjoy. Um, it was really sad though. Really, really hard part for me to watch. Um, but really beautiful cinematography, especially the part where like all the ashes, if you've seen it, oh my goodness, that part. Um, and also has Mark Ruffalo, which I enjoy his acting as well. 
What else did I watch? I watched, um, oh, The Butterfly Effect. I really liked that one. I haven't seen Ashton Kutcher in anything in a while, and I know that's an older film, and I'd never seen it, so I watched it and I liked it. It was, it was really interesting. I know it was really popular back in the day, but I had just never seen it. And I feel like I watched one more. What did I watch? Oh, um, the film Taxi Driver was in there as a mystery thriller, which I really don't think it was, and Mm, it just wasn't my fave. It kind of reminded me of how when I was reading Catcher in the Rye way back in the day and the whole time I remember my teacher was like obsessed with that film when I was a junior in high or that movie when I was a junior in high school. He loved that or, book. <laughs> it's not a movie or a film. It's a book. And so I remember reading it and I was just like this is I just wasn't a fan. And so kind of like with um, what's that? movie Lord of the F or film oh my goodness you guys I can't do this book <laughs> Lord of the Flies kind of like that like where they're so highly regarded films like on society and like Catcher in the Rye is on like it's a it's kind of a coming of age but a story on loneliness and like being a society outcast so anyway I was like at the end of Taxi Driver that was it was very obvious that that that's what the whole theme of it was, is that he was giving this narrative and he was just like definitely feeling like an outsider and he was wanting to prove himself as like being better than the garbage of the world, which is kind of how Catcher in the Rye feels too. Um, so I was just like, mm. I was just like, nah. And, but I did really love the music and like how they set the scene for old, or at least it's old time now because it's a quite old movie, New York. Um, it just wasn't really my thing. So then I was watching a YouTube video on why people love that so much. And also I was trying to figure out why it was in the top like 20 movies of all mystery and thrillers because it really wasn't a mystery. And I don't think it was a thriller, but it was fun to see um, Robert De Niro when he was a lot younger. He was playing a 26 year old, I think in the film. So anyway, that's what I was doing this week. I was having some fun watching some mystery thrillers. I don't need them to be like horror. And I also don't need there to be any gore. I don't really enjoy that. So anyway, um, yeah, that's what I was watching this week. All right, so we're to our last two. We have neutral and my A+. plus. What is it going to be, you guys? Are you biting your nails? You're so nervous. I'm just kidding. Okay, this is a Revlon polish for my neutral spot. This is Untamed. I could have put this in my glitter, kind of. It's not really glittery, but there's tons of shimmer and there's some gold flakies in here. So it's a very sheer black base and then it has um, copper, like pinky copper gold shimmers that are really, really pretty and gold flakies. This um, looks really great at three coats. You do have to build this up though, but I did really, really like it. Is it beautiful enough for me to keep through a D stash? Um, it's beautiful enough. I'm just not sure if I would want to do the number of formulas again. I might... I was going to say I might use this as a topper, but you really do benefit a lot from doing that many coats because you want to get all that depth of shimmer and flaky. So I don't know. I did think this was really beautiful because you guys know I love shimmer. Last up, we have A+, plus, and it's from Rimmel. You guys, this line from Rimmel is so good. I haven't held on to all the ones that I picked up originally. When these first came out, I basically bought the entire line. Um, not basically, I did. Um, CVS only carried like 12 or 13 of them. But this was sent to me by an international subscriber and it was not a shade that I have. And so thank you, you know who you are. This is called Urban Purple and it's just, awesome I just love it really reminded me how much I love this line first off and it's a shade that's just oh so good it's like a, a purpley raspberry it's not really purple but it's going that way 
Mm, this is just so so good. You could wear this at one coat I'm gonna show you two just because I really wanted like a richness of a couple coats But just the formula is so so good. I just love this So if you've never tried this brand before it's sitting in your CVS go give it a try I love their gray if you have this there grab this one the red is really good um, They have a beautiful like teal color. I think I can't remember that one might have stained me though So anyway, let's go ahead and see polishes in our swatch fest thanks you guys for all the awesome comments on my d stash video for pure ice if you haven't watched it yet it's a very i don't go too in depth on each polish like we don't spend like a really long time i cut it on purpose that way so that i'd have to speak quickly through them so that i wouldn't let myself take too long with any polish um but i did live swatching for every single polish because it helped me decide if I should keep something or not. So if you haven't watched that, it's the most recent video right before this one. And I have so many comments from you guys that um, so many of you want to purchase the Fairy Tale Forest collection that I decided to de-stash. That collection is so, so gorgeous. It was really hard for me to decide to de-stash it. Um, but I decided to because about half of them weren't really my favorite. Half of them are like some of my favorite pure ice polishes ever. So I understand the um, demand for that collection. I'm just, since so many of you want it, I'm having a hard time now because I'm trying to figure out how to make it fair. Like there really isn't a way to make it fair. So if I put it up on my store, I'd be basically like whoever sees it first is gonna get it. And oh, I just don't know how to make that fair. I'm just feeling bad about it. <laughs> Because I'm I'm a people pleaser type of personality, so I see all your comments that you guys really really want to pick it up for me since I'm de-stashing it, and um, I just want to make you all happy, and I don't have a way to do that. So ah, I'm just like my mind's like blah. so anyway, um, yeah. But thank you for all the sweet comments. I'm really glad you guys appreciate it. I will definitely continue to um, roll through with that series. Just. If you want to leave me comments and let me know what series or what uh, brand you'd like to see next, just so that you know, I, at this time, I'm not going to de stash um, OPI, China Glaze, or Simple Colors because those are brands that everybody always wants comparisons on. I think Essie, I might not either right now because if I go ahead and de stash something that's not really my favorite, but then people want comparisons for it, it makes it difficult for me. So that's why. That's a lot of the reason why I hold on to so many polishes because then I have it to share with you guys for comparisons. So I hoard extra so that you don't have to. <laughs> I try to tell myself that. No, really, that's that's a lot of the reason why I do. So anyway, you guys, thanks for stopping by today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope that you enjoyed it. Did you relax? Did you kick back and just let yourself relax? I hope you did because I gave you the permission. So I hope the rest of your weekend is super enjoyable and relaxing for you as well. I will see you guys back for the next video with some stuff coming up. I picked up the China Glaze Pastels. These are being sold on Head to Toe Beauty. Um, previously, I think somebody had told me that they think they're only at Sally's, but you can get them all online at Head to Toe Beauty. And we will also be looking at these kind of bleached neons from Finger Paints coming up very soon. There's this beautiful matte glitter in there. This is found at Sally Beauty as well. We will also be looking at the Kathleen Light Spring release, so that's very exciting. Um, I'm going to try to get this one up for you pretty soon. We're still going to be looking at all of these I Love Nail Polish Color Kissed Ultra Hollows. Um, I just was trying to figure out how to swatch them, but the sun finally came back out, so I need to take some photos. But the last day that the sun came out, I was taking photos of the... Um, April hollow hookup box so I finally got photos of those so we'll see those soon too and these are not all the collection reviews coming up but I just wanted to show you a little scattering of them also the glam polish multi chromes with 
they have different things in them. Some of them have um, little iridescent glitters in them. Some of them have hollow scatters. There's, there's a bunch of different stuff in these polishes. These are themed off of Game of Thrones and they're releasing the first part of May. And you guys, they're so beautiful. So um, yes, just a few things coming up for me on my channel. I hope to see you for the next review. Don't forget to stop back on in. Take care, bye.